Okay guys, let's go ahead and do a video on binomial distributions. And so we went over this a little bit in our uh, Lightboard videos, but we need to learn how to do it in uh, Excel and in our Commander. So we've got this little scenario, Derek decides to go play some Frisbee golf, he has been practicing and knows for any given hole he has a 75% chance of getting par or better. So it's a probability that he will get par or better on at least 15 holes at his favorite 18 hole course. What's well, a probability that he will do worse than par on between two to four holes? Also provide the standard deviation, delete that, expected value, and plot, let's do the distribution. Okay, so remember that when we have a binomial distribution, we need to uh, basically have two pieces of information. The first thing that we need to know is the probability of success of a single trial. So probability of success of a single trial here is 0.75 for 75 percent and the number of trials that we are going to run. So he's going to play 18 holes at his course so we're going to say that that equals 18. Okay, so now we can build our support, which starts off with X represents our support. Let's go ahead and put in our PMF, our probability mass function, and we'll say that X equals little x. So remember, probability, capital X is our discrete random variable. So our discrete random variable is when Derek goes and plays a hole. And what's the probability that, so when he plays these 18 holes, what's the probability that he's going to have so many numbers of successes? So you could have one, zero, you could have one, and we could go all the way down to where all 18, oops, let me keep going, all 18 holes are par or less, or, you know, better. Okay, so we need to know our equation here. And if we were to type this out, well, yeah, okay. So it's going to be equals to, and it was n capital C little x. So this was our combination where we have n possible outcomes and we're going to choose the number of successes x at a time. Okay, then we're going to multiply by p raised to the power of x of little x, the member of the support. I want to multiply that by one minus p uh, raised to the power of n minus x. So that's the entire equation. Uh, we'll do it once in Excel to show you how to do it and then I'll show you the fast way to do it within um, oh, within our commander. Alright, so we can use that as reference. Remember this first part is a combination formula. Uh, so we've done that before. We're going to be equals combin and then add in a parenthesis number is going to be 18 because that's how many options we have and we're going to choose our support at a time because we're going to do this for all of those possible outcomes. Now when we do this the number does not change so we need to lock it. If you, It's F4 on a PC or function F4 on a Mac and then we're going to multiply by P. We're going to lock P as well because our probability of success does not change raised to the power of the specific member of the support. All right, we're almost there, multiplied by one minus P, lock that guy. Oh dear, hold on. I hit enters too soon. And then we're going to raise that to the power of our N, lock that, minus X. Woo! Okay, so that's big and long. There's an easier way to do it, and we'll do it in just a second. So we hit enter, and we're gonna drag this thing all the way down. If we've done it right, remember all PDFs, oh, sorry, all PMFs, probability mass functions, sum to the value of one. So if we get the value of one, we did it right. So that's really good. Now let's control our decimals here because they're getting unruly and we've got scientific notation mixed in. Let's just force it all to be a number and let's do out to four decimal places. Okay, now if we want to do our CDF, or cumulative distribution function, which is the probability that the discrete, that the discrete random variable is going to be less than or equal to a specific member of the support. And so we've done this before where we say, okay, this one is equal to just a cross because there's nothing before it. And this one is equal to the specific member of the support plus the CDF above it. 
and we can drag that all the way down. If we've done it right, the last value should equal one, and so we did it right. There's another equation that I actually like better than this, so I'm gonna delete this out. You can use either one, the answer is gonna be the same, but I like it because it's just one equation. So we hit equals sum, we're going to click on this first guy because we want to sum from here to the beginning. And well, okay, we're just at the beginning. Put in a colon and then click on that B2 again if it doesn't pop up. So we want to go from B2 to B2. Like, okay, that's great. And we want to lock this first one. Okay, so it means that we're gonna lock that first reference, but as we go down, we're gonna include more and more values in our summation. Hit enter and if you pull it down, you're gonna get the same thing, but check this out. So this one is that sum. Now if we go and click down a little further, look, it's gonna sum all the PDFs before. It's a really cool little equation. Um, and if you like it, you can use it. If not, you can go back to the original. Okay, so question number one. We have this guy. What is the probability that he will get par on, uh, or better on at least 15 holes? Okay, so that's 15 or more. So we can say that one, we're really looking for the probability of getting of the discrete random variable being greater than or equal to 15 on at least 15. It could be 16, 17, or 18, but we want to know 15 or better. All right, so we can, we can convert this into using our idea of complements. Okay, so we're going to do one minus the probability of x being less than or equal to 14. So that would give us the probability of, so one minus this probability of x being less than or equal to 14 would just give us the remainder of 15 or greater. Okay, so let's do that. So that would be equal to one minus, this is our CDF, uh, so we come down here to where it says 14, and we hit enter. That would be our associated probability. There's another way that we could do it. We could just say equals sum of 15, 16, 17, and 18, and hit enter, and we get the same value, which is really great. Okay, so we got question one done. Let's do question number two. So question number two is what's the probability that he will do worse than par on between two and four holes. Okay, so this one's a little interesting because it is going to require us to think about this in the opposite direction. So I'm gonna shift these guys over just a little bit. And so we're going to instead of you, so this is the probability of, let's say, par or better. And this next question really is asking about, oh dear, give me a second, par or worse. Well, let's go ahead and use our commander to do this one because it's going to be, I can show you how to do this very quickly. So if we want to do worse than par, probability of, or so yeah, the probability of worse than par for any given hole is going to be equal to Give me just a second, we'll bring these over. It's going to be equal to one minus the probability of par or better. Hit enter and we have a 25% chance. Okay, so now let's do this in our commander. So I'm gonna put this as par or better, just so that we have it labeled well. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up R. So I've got my R Studio running, and then I'm going to open up R Commander. So for this one, I'm just going to do library R C M D R for R Commander. Or you can come over and look it up in packages and click click on it. I just think it's faster to type out library and give it a second, and it will open up my our commander. Great. Okay, so right now we're going to go to distributions and we're dealing with discrete random variables. So we want to look at discrete distributions and we want to look at the binomial distribution and then we want to go over to binomial probabilities. Okay, and then check this out. It asks us for those two pieces of information that we need for a binomial uh, situation. 
So here we're going to do the number of trials that we have is we have 18. We have those 18 holes. And this time, instead of looking at the probability of getting par or better, that was 75%, we're going to look at getting worse than par, which is going to be 0 0.25. And I'm just going to click OK. And I'm going to come over to my RStudio, and I see, hey, it provided me with the support and the PMF. So I'm just going to copy this. And I'm going to come back to Excel, and I'm going to paste it. It puts it into one column. That's no big deal. Go to Data, Text to Columns. This time I'm going to do Delimited. You could do Delimited or Fixed Width. Either one works. Hit Next. I'm going to say that it's my space. That's the marker. And I'll click Finish, and it splits them up. Now I want this in number format instead of just scientific. So let's go to number and let's open it up to four decimal places. Okay, and then I'm going to copy these guys and paste them there. And then this is our support of worse than par. Okay. So now we can do our CDF here as well, equals the sum from here. I'm going to lock that guy, F4, colon, and so this is from F2 to F2. I'm going to hit enter and double click it all the way down. Oops, let me get rid of that one. Now you notice that it's got the number one repeatedly. Okay, and the reason is, is because once we get down to these, it's so unlikely to happen, the probability that we add on is very small. Note up here, we have a whole bunch of zeros. So the fact that you see ones a bunch isn't bad. What does, what is bad is if you see something go over one. Okay, so now on question number two, let me I want to move this up a little bit. So question number two, let's write it out. Two is going to be, what is the probability uh, that he will do worse than par in between two and four holes. So we'll say the probability of that two will do less than or equal to x and then less than or equal to four. So we're going to include those two on four. And we can now do that. We'll say equals the sum. So this is that he's going to do worse than par on between two and four holes. Enter and there is a 47 uh, yeah, like a 48% chance that he will do worse than par on between two and four holes. Okay, so then we need to provide the standard deviation expected value and plot the distribution. Okay, so we're going to do the standard deviation with respect to him doing par or better. So, and the expected value. So here we go. So the expected value that he will do par better, par or better, uh, and we can say that that would be equal to, okay, all this is equal to is n multiplied by p. Or we can say roughly 13 and a half holes we expect him to do par or better. And then for the variance of his discrete random variable, this really should be, give me a second, We'll put this up here as a label, and we'll put that back as our discrete random variable. And this is going to be equal to n times p times 1 minus p. That'll give us the variance. And then the standard deviation of our discrete random variable is going to be equal to the square root of our variance. And let's make those to be just four. And last thing that we need to do is we want to plot the distribution. So let's go back to our commander. Uh, give me a second. Here we go. So we'll go to distributions, discrete, binomial, and then plot binomial distribution. And then here we have 18 trials we have a 75% chance of getting right, and we want to plot the probability mass function. Click OK. And here is our distribution for our binomial uh, situation with Derek playing some Frisbee golf. 
But anyways, I hope that that helps you out to be able to answer binomial situations using either Excel uh, or R Commander. I really suggest using R Commander because it's so much faster, a lot less typing in of formulas, and there's a decent scenario to give that a practice on. So good luck.